Good morning. I am riding high on the wave of our first hire retreat and I want to share with you guys a vision <laughs> that I was given. Um, I think this is really important. We, at the end of the retreat, I had everybody go inside, put their hands on their heart and ask for um, a, visual, a vision of their future. I got one. I, w I was like, I'm gonna do it with you guys. And I was kind of surprised. I'm like facilitating this thing. I didn't really think something so big was going to come in for me, but I was like, damn, this is really important. Um, I get taught in meditation visually a lot. Like I see things and kind of like thoughts come to mind. And in our retreat, we did a lot of inner child work. That was a big focus talking to our inner child, getting to know our inner child. We had pictures of our inner child. Do you remember yourself as a kid very well? What you were like, just your nature. Was that appreciated in you? Was that adored in you? If you were shy or scared a lot, was that adored in you? If you had big emotions, was that adored in you? Or were there certain ways that it wasn't okay to be? Hey guys, thank you for tuning in all the way from Italy. So this is what I saw in my vision. Because as we got into some deep work on our retreat, I definitely could not help but notice that many of the people attending had a lot of undealt with pain, heart pain, heartbreak, stuff that happened in childhood that really freaking hurt stories that they created about themselves when they had unevolved psyches. If any of you have kids, you know that the stories they create out of a little incident, like their brother saying, you can't play with me. They take that all the way to nobody likes me or I'm annoying. And that story stays with them for life. Something as trivial, trivial as that is big brother saying, get away from me. I don't, you're annoying. Or it's bigger things. It's unresolved sexual abuse or molestation or abuse or just not being enough. Conditional love, not feeling like you're measuring up, not knowing how to get love from your parents, which is how kids operate. And what I saw in my vision was an image. I saw a picture, actually, I saw future retreats um, and I felt this call to do more heart healing work because what I saw after that, I saw kind of like this like retreat of people doing a lot of heart healing work, which is a lot of what we were doing at this retreat but more of that, it was like pushing me. It's like, you gotta go more into the heart healing because what I saw was an image of like, you know, dried up dirt when it gets all those little cracks in it. I saw a plant trying to grow out of that. And it was like that, that soil represented a broken heart. And it was like, you can't grow as well. It's really hard to grow in dry, cracked, barren soil. So if you wanna help people in their personal growth efforts, if their heart is still broken, if that stuff hasn't been addressed and healed and loved, then you're trying to do all this growth work out of a place of a broken heart. It doesn't work as well. And then I saw an image of really, you know, that perfectly moist, fertile soil that a little seedling is growing out of. It was like, look how much easier it is for a plant to grow out of fertile soil. And that is what a healed heart looks like. And I'm sharing that with you guys because I, man, <laughs> This is so prevalent <laughs> from trying to get in shape, trying to do personal growth work, trying to go after it in life, the things that you want. If your heart is still broken, there's still stuff in you that you don't feel enough. You don't feel worthy. You have these stories about yourself that mean that you're not good enough, that you're fill in the blank some negative story they have about yourself and you're trying to do all this growth work. It's very hard when you don't have that internal place of love. And so I wanted to just take a second to share that with you guys that I think healing your heart 
going after it. Whatever speaks to you. There will be things that speak to you. It might be different for you. You might need different teachers, different modalities. For me, plant medicines, the work of Byron Katie have been extremely heart healing for me. Daily practice of changing my self-talk, questioning my stories about myself, questioning these self-limiting thoughts and saying, having a little talk with my inner child and saying, no girl, noticing when that it's a, usually a frenzy that comes up in us of wanting to prove our worth. Whether that's with our bodies, that's a very common one. Success is a very common one. In relationships, doing pleasing behaviors is a common one. With kids, pleasing your kids, trying to show that you're a good dad, good mom, all that stuff. That you're a good employee, you're worthy. Your body, you look a certain way, you're worthy now. If you see those, it's like, it's a proving energy and it's very exhausting. If you see that coming up in yourself, it's a little tick that there's some heart healing that needs to be done there. So go freaking after it. If you had abuse as a kid and it's never really been dealt with, you can't grow. You're trying to grow out of fertile, un, dry, cracked up soil. That has to be addressed first. I can't tell you how many clients I've had to take off of meal plans and all, macros and all that stuff. I'm like, we can't do that right now. We gotta heal your heart around your body and food. When did this all start? Oh, when my mom made a comment when I was a little kid about, I wonder when she, you're going to get fat or you're looking a little chubby or, you know, my dad put pressure on me to look a certain way or be a certain way or certain things about me weren't valued as a kid, but I got super valued when I made little, made money or whatever. So now, okay, that's how I get love. And look at your life as a result. Look at the stories that you created about what makes you valuable when you were a little kid and look at your life. So ask yourself, what made me, what did I feel as a little kid made me valuable and lovable? And am I ceaselessly chasing it as an adult? Time to revisit those stories. Time to get some outside help. If you're trying to do it on your own, it's going to be really hard because you're working with the same materials that you've been working with your entire life. Those subconscious beliefs are really freaking hard hard to get past without some outside help because that's your whole reality. That's just how you see life. And until you get some other viewpoints coming in at you, it's real hard to do. I just wish I realized sooner to do therapy work to address my childhood trauma. I'm doing it finally. Good for you, girl. Guess what? You guys, we all have childhood trauma. Even if you weren't heavily abused or sexually abused or any of those things, you still have shit, I promise you. I'm in a deep process with a client right now just because her parents have tons of expectations on her. She turned herself into that person that she felt like her parents wanted her to be and it's caused immense physiological issues in her body, the stress from that of proving, proving, proving constantly. We all have shit from childhood and your psyche was not fully developed as a kid and you created these stories about life that are running the show and until you revisit them with love and compassion and have a little talk with that inner child saying, hey, you don't have to prove that. That's not, that wasn't how it is. You were never annoying. You were never not good enough. You were never any of these things. Like you got to go back in and readdress the stuff or it's going to run the show. And you're running your entire life from the perspective of a three-year-old, four-year-old, five-year-old that believes that you are powerless or unworthy or not good enough or not pretty enough or not fit enough or not strong enough or not successful enough or all these things. And you gas out trying to prove that as an adult. So we have to go in and heal our freaking hearts I'm going to make a post about this. I got some little images pulled up of the, the plants and soil. And you're going to be hearing a lot about this for me because it was so deep. I was like, got it. Got it. You cannot grow the way that you could if you're coming from a place of broken hearted soil. Healing our hearts, healing our relationship with ourselves, how we see ourselves is numero uno on the path to growth. Otherwise, your growth work is based in that proving energy. My higher logo 
<laughs> I hate calling it a logo. It's like, it's like the symbol of like the journey that I've been on that has taken me from suffering and misalignment and feeling powerless and limited and a people pleaser and everything I thought I needed to be. The symbol is representative of the journey of being in this place of freedom and self love and excitement and adventure and happiness and peace. And it's, it's a triangle. It's representative of a mountain and there's like an Eagle. It goes inside itself and it looks like a little mountaintop and there's an Eagle soaring out of the center. And that is representative of me always thinking my whole life I had to achieve, 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 achieve and get to the top of the mountain. I'm going to do it. It's not, that's not it. It's about going inside, healing your heart, seeing your innate beauty for just who you freaking are. All of it, all of your nature. If you're a worrier, can you love that side of yourself? If you're anxious, can you love that side of yourself? If you're shy, can you love that side of yourself and adore it? That, when that starts happening, you soar way higher than any freaking mountaintop. I was telling at the retreat, a mountaintop is low ground <laughs> to an eagle. So we go inside, the eagle is representative of being connected to the divine, of going on your divinely guided journey. When you connect to that energy, it's also representative of healing and medicine and love. When you connect to yourself, you can start loving on yourself so much, giving yourself so much compassion, so much love, adoring those little parts of you that weren't adored, revisiting those stories about yourself that you think are unlovable and start loving on them. <laughs> the mountain is like, okay, I guess I can come down and land on a mountain. <laughs> I can go way higher than that. It's easy. Everything becomes easy. Doesn't that sound nice? Cause you're not pressuring yourself all the time to be these things that you think you need to be. And you don't stop doing cool shit. It's the opposite. You actually start doing it more effectively and with joy and fun and no pressure because you see yourself, you love yourself, you honor yourself. Hi Robin. Thank you for coming to the retreat. Yes, it was powerful medicine. Love. That's what it was love and facilitators there who have been to hell and back and found the way out of that by loving on themselves. That's it. You want the ticket to growth. Start loving on yourself. It becomes easy. It becomes fun. Making good food choices and health, for example, becomes easy and fun because you're loving on yourself. Working out and pushing your limits becomes fun. Super fun. Because you're excited about what you can do because you see how powerful you are. Going after your dreams and goals, it stops becoming about you. It's like, I want to help. You're not proving to yourself that you can do it anymore. You're actually in the energy of service and love because you've already filled that cup for yourself. So if you want to grow, my favorite quote, it's right on the top of my website. It's from Leo Tolstoy. It says, everyone thinks of changing the world. No one thinks of changing himself. You want to change the world, you don't have to worry about anybody else. Just start loving on yourself. And it just happens automatically. Because the energy that you exude, the things that you say, nuanced in conversation, is a paradigm shift for people. They're like, hmm, that's different energy than I've never thought like that before. That's how you change the world. When you love it on yourself, you get connected to your soul and purpose and vision for your life. And you just want to start giving because you got so much already in here. You got an endless cup of love to give. That's how you change the world. Not thinking about all everybody else. It's just you. That's it. You can never be intuitive with your eating and training until you love yourself truly. Absolutely. You get in these immature mindsets of the unhealed inner child that are like, I love myself. I need <laughs> fill in the blank junk food that upsets your stomach. That's not love. It doesn't mean you can't have those things. Of course you can. But real love is like, what do you need, body? I got you. 
what makes me feel good because I'm worthy of feeling good. I want to feel good. I'm make a choice that is in my own best self, own best interest. You know? It becomes easy. So I got to go take my kids to school now. But I just wanted to drop that because it was just <laughs> coming out of me. You want to grow? Focus on healing your heart. Touch your heart. It is a hack that we use in training. If I want you to activate your side delt, I might ask you if I can palpate it, right? So that it increases your connection. Your brain gets alerted. We're, we're working right here. So when you want to start healing your heart, touch it. Go like this. Feel it. Go inside. Be like, I'm here. Is there anything I need to know? Or I need help. And just listen and just feel. That's how you grow. Right here, baby. Think through your heart. That is what ayahuasca taught me. I heard those words literally, audibly on ayahuasca. I felt something touch me. There was no one there. I literally felt, I was like, whoa, like, excuse you. And there was no one there. And I heard, shh, because my mind was racing. And I heard, shh think here. So as I dropped, literally tried to drop my brain and think through my heart, the eagle appeared to me and led me on this very beautiful journey of healing and heart healing. So touch your heart. Try to think through your heart. Get quiet. Love on yourself. Ask, what do you need? Talk to your inner child. Love on them. Love the things that they that were never loved in them. If your inner child says, I don't want to go hang around those people, but I feel like I have to because they're not going to like me if I don't do it. Mm -mm. <laughs> Show up for them. I'm here with you now. You don't have to do that. Your connection with yourself goes freaking exponential. Your inner child says, I want to go play. I want to go outside. I want to explore. Okay. I'm going to take you outside. We're going to go play. Mm, you felt something tickling in your tummy. Listen to that. Get curious about it. The answers are all in there, guys. They're all inside you. You just got to get quiet and ask and take the freaking pressure off and love on yourself. Let it flow through you. That's how you grow. That's it. There is no guru, guru in the world that knows as much about what you need as you do, as what's in here. But you just can't hear it if you don't get quiet and ask and love on yourself. If you're being self-abusive, an inner critic is screaming. Does that little inner child feel safe to express themselves? Does a little kid whose mom or dad is like just reaming them? How come you never do anything? You're not doing your homework. Do they feel safe to express their personality and their soul and what they need? Hell fucking no. They do not. And a lot of us are doing that to ourselves because that is the pattern we picked up in childhood. And now we're abusing ourselves. Now we're putting the pressure on ourselves. And your little inner child does not feel safe with you. So if you want to get your, your inner child is your, is you, your real you, your soul. And they're not going to come out unless they feel safe and honored and adored and loved. And then what happens when a little kid is honored and safe and adored and loved? Dun, 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 they come out. They feel safe to express themselves. So if you want to get to know the real you, you got to start being real nice to yourself, to that little inner child inside of you, and they will start coming out. And that's the real you, baby, before you got all programmed. So you want to grow? Love on yourself. Touch your heart. Think through your heart. That's it. And go after facilitators. There are plenty of people out there waiting, ready to help you. Make that move for yourself. We cannot grow with a broken heart. This doesn't, I mean, kind of. I mean, one of those little like half ass plants. It's trying really hard. <laughs> it doesn't need to work that hard. I love you, Josh. Thank you for being here. So, you want to grow? All you got to do is heal that heart and start loving on yourself. That's it. The rest will just start coming. Okay, I gotta go. I love you guys. Bye.